Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Dave and I'm so glad that you are, have joined me on our continuing journey to a deeper faith. Today we're celebrating our missions festival after a two-year pause due to COVID. We're really excited to restart this annual event. Also, in the next couple of months, there will be a number of um, transitions and, and changes in our online presence as we prepare for uh, a new pastor coming in and uh, my <laughs> finishing up my ministry here. So be patient as, as we work through those changes and those shifts as we uh, train some new folks on, on dealing with uh, recording video and, and so on. Just be patient with us. We appreciate that so much. I encourage you to go to our website, hcfumc.weebly.com, and click on the Connect With Us button just to let me know that you're out there and watching. Um, if you have a prayer request, you can also click the Prayer Request button, and I'll be glad to keep your uh, your request in my prayers. God is is so generous, providing for our needs every day, and we have opportunity through uh, our generosity as well to provide for the needs and ministry opportunities that we discover around us. So let us offer our gifts to God, laying down our treasure that God may be blessed and honored in our giving. As you continue your faithfulness and generosity as, as God directs you, I know that God will bless you. You can continue to mail in your offerings to either Hollyton or Conklin Forks United Methodist Church, or you can give to Hollyton online from our webpage, hcfumc.weebly.com forward slash giving. Let us worship together. Wonderful God, so indiscriminate is your love and so heedless of color and nationality and class, falling like sun and rain on all your children, the righteous and the unrighteous, the just and the unjust. For your lavish, gracious care, we give you thanks and praise. Come now and sow in our hearts the seed of your word. Come and knead into our spirit the leaven of your spirit. And may our seed and leaven transform our words and deeds so that others might come to know our, your love and give you praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord and friend. Lord, we're grateful for your blessings. Every day you renew them. We're so encouraged by your love, your care, and your guidance along our journey. We long to be more like Jesus, following in his steps, being and doing those things that demonstrate his love to all the world around us. We praise you, Lord, for we know you always hear and answer our prayers. We praise you for you know our hearts, you know what we carry, the joys, the concerns, our own stuff, our own burdens, we now offer them up to you. For we know that there is nothing you cannot do. You are limitless in your ability to heal every disease and provide for every need. We humbly offer ourselves to you, knowing that through faith you are working out your plan for each of us. We are grateful beyond words except to offer our voices together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, I have never actually been on a mission trip. I'm really excited that in three weeks I'll be joining my wife, Pastor Jenny, and a team from the Nimmonsburg United Methodist Church on my first mission experience. 
we're going to Henderson Settlement in Kentucky. I'm glad to announce that our service today has a special emphasis on missions. Our missions festival concludes today after the service, but our mission continues as soon as we leave. Today, we turn our focus to the Damascus Road. The reading is probably familiar to you. Let's listen. Hear the word of the Lord, and may God add blessing to the hearing. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20 says, Meanwhile, Saul was still spewing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest, seeking letters to the synagogues in Damascus. If he found persons who belonged to the way, whether men or women, these letters would authorize him to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. During the journey, as he approached Damascus, Suddenly, a light from heaven encircled him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say, asking him, Saul, Saul, why are you harassing me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are harassing, came the reply. Now get up and enter the city. You will be told what you must do. Those traveling with him stood there speechless. They heard the voice but saw no one. After they picked, up, picked Saul up from the ground, he opened his eyes but couldn't see. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and neither ate nor drank anything. In Damascus, there was a certain disciple named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Yes, Lord. The Lord instructed him, Go to Judas' house on Straight Street and ask her a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias enter and put his hands on him to restore his sight. Ananias countered, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man. People say he has done horrible things to your holy people in Jerusalem. He's here with authority from the chief priests to arrest everyone who calls on your name. The Lord replied, Go. This man is the agent I have chosen to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias went to the house. He placed his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way as you were coming here, he sent me so that you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, flakes fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. After eating, he regained his strength. He stayed with the disciples in Damascus for several days. Right away, he began to preach about Jesus in the synagogues. He is God's son, he declared. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Saul was an enthusiastic persecutor of the church. His purpose was to keep his religion pure. He followed God to the nth degree, yet this encounter would turn his world upside down. This personal meeting between Saul and the risen Christ is more than just a conversion story that results in a new name. It's the launch of world missions for the church, and Paul could only guess where this experience would take him. He ended up at, at his destination, led by the hand due to his new blindness. But he arrived in Damascus with a new purpose, to wait. For three days, he didn't eat or drink. He just waited in his blindness for a further revelation. Meanwhile, a disciple named Ananias was called upon by the Lord in a vision, and he was called beyond his fears to go to Paul, that Paul might get beyond the blindness he had carried in the past to his new mission, and Paul was expecting him. The Lord replied, Go, this man is the agent I have chosen to carry my name before Gentiles, kings and Israelites. The mission is revealed. 
You may not have had such a dramatic conversion experience. You may not have had such explicit direction for your life, but you do have a call. You do have a mission. You do, like Ananias, need to respond beyond your fears, to fulfill, beyond your fears, I'm sorry, to fulfill that mission. We can fulfill our mission in various ways. Of course, we can fulfill our mission as individuals and we can do it together as well. We can support those who go away on missions or we can go on missions ourselves, maybe both. But we have plenty to do right where we are too. You can go on mission next door. You can go into the city. You can go across town. What exactly is our mission? We are the agents God has chosen to carry his name before those who are around us every single day. Let's humble ourselves before God in prayer. Dear Lord, help us to continuously be aware of all people around us every single day. Where there are people, there are needs. Give us your eyes to see some of those needs and the wisdom to know how to help as well. Help us to be your hands and feet as we serve others right where we're at. And allow them to see your light in our lives as we do work in your name. Amen. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>